Before every home had a modern furnace and layers of high-tech insulation, staying warm during a harsh winter was a real challenge. Think back to the 1930s and 1940s, homes were often drafty, and central heating was a luxury that didn't always work as efficiently as we expect today. Families had to be clever and resourceful to keep the chill at bay. They didn't just turn up a thermostat, they actively managed the heat they had. This meant finding ways to make every bit of warmth count, from wearing layers of clothing indoors to using simple, smart tricks that maximized the output of their heating systems. It was a time of practical ingenuity born from necessity. The heart of many of these older homes was the cast-iron radiator. These weren't the sleek, small baseboard heaters you might see today. They were massive, heavy, and often ornate pieces of equipment. Their size was intentional. Engineers knew that older houses had single-pane windows and walls with little to no insulation. To combat the constant cold air seeping in, the heating system needed to be oversized. These large radiators were designed to hold a lot of hot water or steam, creating a substantial mass of thermal energy that could radiate steady warmth into a room, even when cold drafts were a constant presence. They were built to be powerful workhorses in a constant battle against the cold. These radiators work primarily through a process called radiant heat. Just like the sun warms your face on a cool day, the hot metal surface of the radiator emits thermal radiation in all directions. This energy travels through the air and warms up any objects it hits, the furniture, the walls, the floor, and the people in the room. This is a very comfortable type of heat because it warms you directly, rather than just heating the air. However, the system wasn't perfect. A lot of that valuable radiant heat was sent in directions where it wasn't needed, representing a significant waste of precious fuel and energy. The challenge for families, especially during the fuel rationing years of World War II, was to get the most out of these powerful but sometimes inefficient systems. Turning up the boiler meant burning more coal or oil, which was either expensive or simply not available. So, instead of creating more heat, they focused on directing the heat they already had. This led to the development of some incredibly simple yet effective hacks. These weren't high-tech solutions, but rather common-sense adjustments that anyone could do. They understood that if the radiator was warming the wrong things, the solution was to redirect that warmth to where it mattered most, the living space. One of the biggest flaws in the placement of old radiators was their typical location. In most homes, you will find radiators positioned against an exterior wall, usually right under a window, there was a good reason for this. Placing the radiator there helped to create a curtain of warm air that would rise and counteract the cold drafts coming from the single-pane glass. It was a smart way to fight the coldest part of the room directly. However, this prime location created another significant problem. The radiator doing its job of radiating heat in all directions was sending a huge amount of its energy straight into the cold, uninsulated exterior wall behind it. This was a tremendous waste of energy. The cast iron radiator would heat up the plaster and lath of the wall, and that heat would then conduct right through the brick or wood siding to the outdoors. You were essentially paying to heat the neighborhood. In an uninsulated house, as much as 30 to 40 percent of the radiator's heat output could be lost directly into the wall it was placed against. Families could feel this inefficiency. The area right around the radiator was warm, but the rest of the room might still feel chilly because a large portion of the heat never even had a chance to circulate. It was like trying to fill a bucket with a large hole in the bottom. People during the 1930s and 1940s were keenly aware of this problem. Fuel was a precious commodity, and every shovel full of coal that went into the boiler had to provide the maximum amount of comfort. They knew that a hot wall behind the radiator meant wasted fuel and a colder room. It was a simple observation. If the wall feels hot to the touch, that's heat that isn't warming your family. The goal became finding a way to stop that heat from escaping and turn it around, pushing it back into the room where it could do some good. This practical mindset is what led to one of the most effective low-tech energy-saving tricks of the era. This issue is not just a relic of the past, it still affects many older homes today that have retained their original radiator systems. Even with some modern insulation, an exterior wall will always be colder than an interior one and it will always act as a heat sink. Any radiator placed against it without a proper thermal barrier is losing some of its efficiency. Understanding this fundamental problem of heat loss is the first step toward appreciating the simple genius of the solution that countless families turned to during a time when every degree of warmth was cherished and every drop of fuel was conserved with care. 
The solution to the problem of a heat-leaking wall was brilliantly simple, put something reflective behind the radiator. During the 1940s, wartime conservation efforts made this trick especially popular. The idea was to place a barrier between the radiator and the exterior wall that would bounce the radiant heat back into the room before it could be absorbed by the plaster and lost to the outside. This is the same principle that a shiny aluminum foil uses to keep food warm. Shiny surfaces are poor absorbers and emitters of thermal radiation, but they are excellent reflectors. By putting a reflective surface behind the radiator, you are essentially creating a heat mirror. Families got creative with the materials they used. Since resources were scarce, they often repurposed whatever they could find. Large sheets of kitchen tin foil, while a bit flimsy, could be glued to a piece of cardboard for rigidity and then slipped into the narrow space behind the radiator. Others use polished metal sheets, like tin or aluminum, if they could be sourced. The key was that the surface facing the radiator had to be shiny. This simple addition didn't require any changes to the heating system itself and cost next to nothing, yet it made a noticeable difference in how warm a room felt, all without burning a single extra piece of coal. Today, you can easily replicate this classic home improvement trick with a modern, more effective materials. The easiest way is to use specially designed radiator reflector foil, which is essentially a sheet of bubble insulation with a reflective layer on one or both sides. You can find this at most home improvement stores. If you want a DIY solution, a sturdy piece of cardboard covered neatly with heavy-duty aluminum foil works just as well. The key is to make it last. You want a material that won't degrade over time from the constant heat. Make sure your foil is smooth, as wrinkles can trap heat and reduce reflectivity. To install it, first, give the area a good cleaning. The space behind a radiator can collect a lot of dust. Measure the height and width of your radiator and cut the reflector panel so it is slightly smaller than the radiator itself. You want it to be hidden from view once it's in place. Then, simply slide the panel into the gap between the radiator and the wall. You can use some double-sided adhesive tape or construction adhesive to hold it securely against the wall. This ensures it stays put and provides a consistent reflective barrier, turning wasted heat into cozy, room-filling warmth. Reflecting heat back into the room was only half of the battle. The other part of the radiator's function is convection. The radiator heats the air directly around it. This warmer, less dense air rises towards the ceiling. As it does, it pulls cooler, denser air from the floor level in toward the radiator to be heated. This creates a natural circulation of air in the room, which helps to distribute the warmth. However, in a room with a high ceiling, a lot of that wonderfully warm air would just pool up near the top, leaving the lower part of the room, where people actually live, noticeably cooler. It was another inefficiency that needed a practical solution. The ingenious answer was to install a simple shelf, just a few inches, above the top of the radiator. This shelf acted as an airflow guide. Instead of allowing the rising column of hot air to go straight up to the ceiling, the shelf blocked its path and redirected it horizontally out into the center of the room. This simple change had a dramatic effect. It pushed the warm air into the living space, improving air circulation and mixing the warm and cool air much more effectively. The room felt warmer overall because the heat was being delivered where it was needed most, not stored uselessly up by the ceiling. This shelf also provided an added benefit, especially for radiators placed under windows. The rising hot air would often cause discoloration or peeling on the paint or wallpaper on the wall above it over time. This streaking, caused by dust particles carried in the convection current, was a common sight in older homes. The radiator shelf acted as a shield, protecting the wall surface from this direct heat and airflow. It kept the walls cleaner and preserved the paint job. Plus, it created a handy spot to place items that could benefit from gentle warmth, like rising bread dough or damp mittens, as long as they were not flammable. Building and installing a radiator shelf is a straightforward project for any homeowner. You can use a simple piece of wood, like pine or oak, cut to be slightly wider and longer than the top of your radiator. You'll want to mount it to the wall using sturdy shelf brackets, leaving about 3 to 4 inches of clearance between the top of the radiator and the bottom of the shelf. This gap is crucial for allowing proper airflow. Make sure the shelf is secure. You have now created a device that not only improves your heating efficiency, but also adds a bit of functional elegance to your room.
These old-fashioned radiator tricks are more than just charming historical footnotes, they are incredibly relevant today as we all look for ways to save energy and lower our heating bills. The fundamental principles of heat transfer haven't changed, a reflective barrier still prevents radiant heat loss, and a simple shelf still directs convective airflow. Applying these two simple, low-cost modifications to your old cast-iron radiators can make a real, measurable difference in your home's comfort and your energy consumption. It's a perfect example of how the practical wisdom of the past can offer effective solutions for the present. The logic behind these radiator hacks can be applied to other types of heaters as well. If you have a freestanding wood stove or a space heater that you place near a wall, you are likely losing heat in the exact same way. Placing a non-combustible heat shield on the wall behind your wood stove is not just a good idea, it's often required by building codes for safety. This shield, often a sheet of metal or tile backer board spaced out from the wall, does the exact same thing as the radiator foil. It reflects heat back into the room and protects the wall. These principles are universal. Even with modern heating systems, we can learn from this mindset of active heat management. It's about thinking where your heat is going. Are you heating rooms you don't use? Is your furniture blocking your heating vents? Can you use ceiling fans in reverse, that's clockwise, during the winter to push that warm air pooled at the ceiling back down into the living space? These are all modern applications of the same core idea. Don't just make more heat, use the heat you have more intelligently. It's a shift from passive consumption to active, thoughtful conservation. In the end, the 1940s radiator hack is a powerful reminder that not all solutions need to be complex or expensive. The resourcefulness of previous generations, born out of necessity, provides us with a blueprint for sustainable living. By looking back at how they stayed warm, we can find simple, effective, and time-tested strategies to make our own homes more comfortable and efficient. It proves that sometimes, the smartest technology is a simple idea, well-executed, that stands the test of time. That's the kind of wisdom that helps you build a better and warmer home.